Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors, America's only daily outdoor TV show. Your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. I'm glad you're here this morning. Got a big show lined up and a good show lined up, as always. But first, let's take a look at our weather. We're looking at it. It's still, still warm. I thought that cool down was going to last a little bit, but it's going to get up to 90 today, low 76, and not, not as cool as we thought it was going to be. Water temperature is hanging in there at 86 degrees. Right, take a look at our river reading brought to us by Mountain Dew. Get out and do. The Appalachian Cold at Blunstown is an even 6.7, real steady on that reading right there. And then take a look at the Chalk to Hatchet at Caraville. It's at a 2.7. Now, it, both of those rivers look uh, real steady, not a lot of movement in them. So, you, whatever you, if you like rising or falling, you're not going to you're not going to get it. But now, this is going to be some really good steady. Uh, I always felt like a steady a steady river is a steady bite. I've always had that I've always had that feeling about them. So, uh, you know, not, not that big adjustment. So, if you like river and creek fishing, it's going to be a good weekend to do that. Take a look at our tide chart brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn, right here on 23rd Street. We're looking at today, today is the actually 9th of, of September, and we're looking at a high tide at 144 this morning and a low tide at 1259. Good tides. We've got the next five or six days going to be really strong tides. And it's going to be uh, sort of the wind now is still coming out of north northeast, and so we're going to hold that tide out just a little bit of some of the base systems up on the northern shore. And we're looking at it coming out of northeast at about 11. Okay, so it's, it's going to be uh, the high tide is like I say 144 this morning and low tide is at 1259. All right, let's take a, a break and we'll be right back. All right, welcome back. Winston Chester here, survivor of a hurricane, of a tornado, and an earthquake all in one week. Did y'all hear about that story? Uh, yesterday I, I talked about Hurricane Michael. It was actually Hurricane Laura that went north through Louisiana, then went east toward Tennessee, but I'm going to get a lot of mileage off that surviving all three of those natural disasters. Okay. All right, look, you know, if you're in the south and drive around these country roads up in Alabama or Georgia or North Florida, you're liable to run across a sign like this, especially this time of year, the end of the summer, all kinds of things going on. Check this out. This roadside, the top left-hand corner, let's go from top to bottom, maters, taters, cucumber, and peach. Okay, and then on the right column, yeller, squash, zucchini, okra, and purple hull peas. Okay, which is purple hull. But that, I got a kick out of that. I sent that to my, uh, to, to my grandkids and told them I had figured figure it out. They couldn't quite figure out all of them. But anyway, that's, uh, you'll, you'll see that. And it made me think about all the old timers back in the day where they would get all the vegetables and and they'd get them all together in South Alabama, South Georgia, and come down here to the coast, and they'd be swapping off in October. They'd be swapping off these vegetables here, or we'd be swapping off these wooden barrel full of salted fish. And that was always, a, a, I, I love that part of that history, because they everybody helping. Uh, okay, we've had Andy Cobb on the show before. Andy Cobb is a, uh, you know, works with U.S. Forest Service and does a good job. Want to get him back on as soon as things settle down. And Andy's wife, uh, what happened? Andy, they had a place in Mexico Beach and they got wiped out. And he had a really nice boat down there and he just got, he just got total. <laughs> he just got, and by the way, I hope you got to see that uh, Hurricane Michael special on the Weather Channel. That was very interesting. And he's going to be showing it again. But anyway, his wife uh, got, put this on, uh, got tired of seeing everyone's boat price, everybody's boat picked on the weekend. I finally closed the deal on this bad boy. This is a joke they put together, but this is, uh, well, Andy Cobb has him a boat now, so if you see him, congratulate him on the boat and uh, tell him he probably needs to get a life jacket in there and everything will be okay. All right, let's move on to some really serious stuff now. Colton Wall hunting with his dad. Okay, Derek Wall, he's a dentist up there in Lynn Haven. Uh, his kids came through Mosley, and his great kids, and Colton was in my outdoor class, and he's finished up college, I think, now, but they went hunting, and they were in Ogdensburg, that's uh, Utah, and look at there. Is that not a classic picture? What a huge animal there! Look at that! Look at that! Wow, still in velvet. Good job. I know. I know. Uh, let's go from big monsters to uh, we still got a monster in the picture, but <laughs> real seals. 
Uh, Y'all know Bill. He's been on the show before. Look what he caught down. We're talking about going creek fishing, and Bill loves to go creek fishing, and he's really proud of that. But Bill is quite the consummate outdoorsman, and he he does some good little videos on his phone, and I, I need to show some of them because he's a real deal, sort of like Billy Grantham. All right, good job, Bill Shields. Bob Bob Billsma watch his show. He, he and uh, LeVon watch his show all the time. He, this is our first bear picture of the year, but they're, they're going to be, are they trained to go to where the feeders are? He's just waiting for it to come out. Now, is that not funny? And our bear population is thriving. We have some, we have a lot of bears here. And so uh, if you want to feed them, fine. If you want to try to keep them out of there, uh, good luck. But uh, be aware of the bears. Okay. Anyone know when them black-eyed peas we ate for good luck on New Year's supposed to kick in? Does that not go along with 20, the year 2020? All right. Ernie Regadio, my neighbor up there in Southport. Hey, Coach, this is a picture of my grandson, Toon, with his mangrove snapper. He called it Tyndall. He got three keepers. Now, listen, that is some really fine eating, and I've seen a lot of folks have been hitting the mangrove snapper this past couple of weeks. They've been really hot. Uh, and I, I said, hey, Ernie, that's awesome. I'll get you on the show. How old is he? He is six. I first took him fishing when he was two and a half. He didn't want me to cast for him. <laughs> he did it by himself. After I showed him how one time, I said, smart boy. So good job, Ernie. Where to go with that? Trey Groom posted this with a group of boys at what they call a not-so-serious Saturday tournament. Now, this is important for all of us. To anyone who is fishing Deer Point Lake in the near future, there's a new log right in the middle of Bear Creek entrance from the main lake. It looks small in a photo, but it's a big one. So you see it right there. And that's, you know, all the winds and storms we have, that can really, uh, especially people going fast, they think it's just something small there. But those big logs can really put a hurting on a foot of a motor. So be aware of that. Okay, don't forget, I'd mention this time or two. This is coming up now. Saturday, September 26th, you're not that far from here. The Seasons of Hope, Southeastern Dog Hunters, Appalachia Cola, uh, National Trash Cleanup. Okay. And I just, uh, we're talking about Labor Day traffic. This, this is 331. We're going to talk about Labor Day later with all the people. This is 331 coming out of Freeport going north toward the Phoenix Springs uh, Monday after lunch, headed back. So it was just wall-to-wall -wall people, not only over in Walton County, it was it was wall-to-wall -wall here in Bay County and also in Gulf County. Okay, my buddy Chris Knox, we talked about on the Friday fishing report, the last two Fridays we talked about getting getting some crabs, and he and Chantrell, they got a, does that not look good? Good job, Chris Knox. Okay, I take care. Well, I got I got one more. I want to show you this one too. This is Nathan Stuckey. Uh, yes, this these are ticks. Ticks are out in late summer, Now, these are baby ticks. Okay, but now that would put a hurting on you if you're walking through there. That special kind of a cloth there, so they just sort of stuck to it. It looks like it's tick farming, but uh, be aware of the ticks out there right now, especially walking through the woods. Okay, okay, I got some more stuff. Let's go and take a break now. We'll be right back. All right, welcome back. I want to, uh, something, I was talking to Scott Lindsay the other day. He brought up something very interesting. I thought it was, you know, we're talking about uh, the trees falling. I saw, that, you know, they're snapping off. In fact, one fell in, you know, close to our house, not close to the house, but on the road going in our house just the other day, about that big round that had been, been wounded during Hurricane Michael, and it fell over into the road, on the edge of the road in a ditch, but no one, you know, no problem. But I just want you to be aware of these falling pine trees. They're dying now. They've, they've been... Uh, been hit two years and, and they're dying. But if you noticed, especially driving through a place like Tyndall where you sort of look out and see everything, all most of the trees snapped off at the same height. And Scott was talking to me the other day, he talked to someone, he brought up a very valid point. I, I hadn't thought about it. I mean, one of those uh, one of those trees, those pine trees, snap off at, at basically the same height all, all the way through for the most part. And and the guy told him, and it made a lot of sense that this, that's where the sap, the pine tree tar, the, the sap, where it has settled down. Because remember in the, in the springtime and summer, the sap rises up in the pine tree, okay? And then that's, when it, that's where they get it. And then in the cold weather, it starts coming back down. So in October, of course, it had been coming about halfway back down the tree. 
and that's about where you know, above there was weak, and below that was strong with the sap, and it says snapped off right there. So I thought that was an interesting point. I'll pass that on to you. You're amazing. Well, you just never, you never stop learning. You can all, learn all your life and all. And uh, but anyway, I was talking about trees, and walking in the woods, and I, I was in a situation the other day. I was uh, down at, at our Cape House. I was pulling some some weeds and all. It's pretty thick in the area. I mean, I, we have ground rattlesnakes down there. Those ground rattlers and and they're, you know, they're not big, but they're hard to see. And I'm, I'm reaching in there and pulling stuff up, and I'm thinking, I know better, I know better. So I put a glove, I put a glove on my left hand, I kept pulling my right hand. Don't, don't ask me to explain that, but I could just get a better grip pulling the weeds. And I got to thinking, now, if I got a snake bit, out here on Cape Sand Blast, uh, I've got to, you know, take a little bit of time to get back to the hospital. What would I do? And I'm always, you know, back in the day, you'd, you'd cut it and all that, but, but we, you know, we don't do that anymore. And I, what happened when I took my break, I went inside and I, I thought about, you know, what would I, you know, what would I do? I know you want to keep it uh, below your heart. So I read the four things, and, and cause I, I really thought I might get snake bit and that thick stuff cause uh, three out of four times I'm seeing the ground rattlers all through there. But anyway, first, okay, here's the four things that they, they recommend. Remove any jewelry or watches so that uh, they could cut it through the skin. Number one right there, if swelling occurs, or number one. Okay, number two, that second dot, Keep the area of the bite below the heart in order to slow the spread of venom through the bloodstream. And number three, remain still and calm. If you can roll over to your side and rest in the recovery position, that would be good. Moving around a lot will cause the venom to spread faster. You know that, you don't want your heart to beat fast. You gotta stay calm. It's gonna be hard to do when you're bit by a snake. And the last one, this is important now. Cover the bite with a clean, dry bandage. Try to use a pressure and mobilization bandage if you can't like a gauze, a gauze wrap. This type of bandage should be tightly wrapped around the bite. Then wrap another bandage around the entire limb so that it's immobilized. So basically what I already figured out when I went back out there, if I got bit, I probably won't get bit right in here, then obviously I was gonna you know, keep it dry. But see, earlier I was thinking, in, for some reason, I read somewhere where you put it in the ice and all, but it said don't do that. In fact, let's look at the things it says don't do. This is interesting. What shouldn't you do, okay? What shouldn't you do when treating a snake bite? Don't, <laughs> okay, don't pick up the snake or try to wrap it up or kill it. Now, my first instinct, I'm gonna kill that snake. And this will increase your chance of getting bit again. Even dead snakes can bite. This is true now, hard, hard to believe, but they researchers have shown it time and time again. I've seen it. Dead snakes can, will keep on moving their jaws. And the second one, which most of us still think about doing, don't apply a tourniquet. And number three, don't cut into the wound at all. And we used to, you know, back in the day, we are supposed to cut and let it bleed out. Well, you don't, it don't bleed out. The next one, don't try to suck out the venom. You watch some of these old movies and that's what they were trying to do. And here's what the one after that, don't apply ice or use water. See, I, I thought ice would be good for it because it would, it would really you know, contract the muscles and contract the cells. But no, they're saying not to. Don't drink alcohol, don't worry about that. Uh, then the next one, don't drink beverages with caffeine, which makes sense, your heart's gonna beat a little bit faster. And the last one, and I didn't, you know, this, I, I, I could see people doing this. Last one, don't take any pain relieving medication, such as ibuprofen, Advil, or anything like that. So those are things you don't do. And uh, you know, I've been an outdoorsman my whole life and, and I, I know these things, but it's not, it's not bad every now and then to refresh your memory because I hadn't really read about snake bites in years. And like I say, it's been an evolution of how to treat snake bites. And if you're an outdoorsman around my generation, you know what I'm talking about was changing so uh, I, you know so I was thinking when I went back outside to, to pull some more weeds and all bushes and all I was thinking I was probably gonna get bit right in here if I got bit so what I was gonna do you know I had I had galls I have galls in my truck so I was just gonna wrap it really tight really tight and I'll you know, keep it down in here and, and, and uh, let Gail drive me to the hospital and and but uh, I, I won't do anything else to it and we're gonna cut it and all the things like that so keep those things in mind I, a lot of times you sort of Try to envision yourself in, in situations maybe of danger or, and what you would do. I've always done that. You know, what if I fell down in that gully over there? What if I fell out of the boat over here? What would I do? I've always sort of uh, preempted what I, if, look, fortunately I've been blessed and none of those bad things have happened to me. I have been bit one time with a snake, but uh, it, it didn't, uh, I, I survived it along with the hurricane and tornado and earthquakes. But uh, 
It, it wasn't a bad little uh, little uh, rat snake going back. Okay, let's uh, let's go and take our break. We'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. Our fishing game time today brought to us by Blue Water Outriggers in Port St. Joe. We're looking at 448 to 648 this morning, and then uh, six. Let's see, 512 to 712 this afternoon. Good time there, and we're going to talk about Blue Water Sun tomorrow. Some of the deals they have down there. I want to jump on. Uh, I want to. Uh, everyone just amazed at the amount of people that's actually going scalloping this year. And I think one of the reasons I think about it last night, one of the reasons I think the pandemic added to it because so many people bought boats and everything. So that's one of the reasons sort of stacked on top of normal excitement that people have. But I, I, it's been hard hit. I was trying to figure out last night how hard hit was St. Joe Bay with the scallops. Now, I'm not, a, I'm not a research scientist, but I've been around them and I've slept in a Holiday Inn. And I know what these guys do and girls do. They do, and I've, I've seen what they do. So I, this is Winston Chester's little research, okay? Now, the season is six weeks, but it only covers five weekends, okay? Uh, and also, so what I did, uh, I'm averaging, uh, okay, everybody's told me between three and 400 boats, okay, out there. So what I did, I did uh, six weeks and five weeks, okay, and plus, I personally counted around 75 kayaks uh, Sunday afternoon. Uh, just in one area where the kayak launch there, the stump hole. <laughs> that's, that's been incredible. And then so anyway, so I did three weekends at 400, okay? So that's three weekends at 400 boats. That's a Saturday and Sunday. So three times eight is 2,400, okay? Okay, that's 20, 2,400, 2,400. Okay, y'all follow me now. Y'all pay attention. That back row about there. Okay, now the two, the two weekends, uh, I'm going to say the last two weekends, they didn't quite get that many, so they're only going to get 300 on Saturday and Sunday. So those boats, and see, I'm, I'm counting, uh, that's going to be about uh, two times, they're going to be up 600, okay? 600, so anyway, uh, you multiply that out, that's going to be 2,400 and about 1,200 here, okay? Uh, boats and kayaks, okay, now. If you do it for six weeks and five, okay, five days, and I, anyway, multiply this on out, and it's going to be like 1,100 trips, okay, 1,100 trips here, uh, 1,125 trips, and 750 trips. Y'all with me? It's new math. So I figured out there's going to be 5,475 trips, okay? That's okay. That's how many. That's how many trips I'm counting coming from the City Marina. Fresnel and State Park, that's how many trips taken by the boats, okay? Now, let's say each boat, everybody didn't limit out. Most people, everybody, everybody I talk to say they limited out. So if, uh, if, if they, if they did, okay, I'm gonna round off, instead of 5,475, I'm gonna round off to 5,000, so I multiply 5,000 trips times 10 gallons, which is two five-gallon buckets, okay? And that's with, that's with, uh, 475 people not, 475 of those trips not doing. So 5,000 trips times 10, gallon, times 10 gallons is 50,000 gallons, okay? 50,000 gallons of scallop. That makes sense now. I, I know some of y'all are confused right now because you're not paying attention, but it's 50,000 gallons. And then that's, that's how many gallons. And then I don't count plus what I call the DDs. A DD is a double dipper. The double dippers come from the uh, campground areas, uh, either at State Park or the private campgrounds there, or people that live in the area. They'll go in the morning and then go back in the afternoon. There's always been double dippers, always will be. And so they'll add to it. And then the, uh, the rental, you see the, the people that, uh, the rental boats, uh, there are a lot of rental boats there now. So anyway, I'm, I'm figuring there were 50,000 gallons of, of scallops taken out of, uh, out of St. Joe Bay this year. and I, I'm assuming it's going to, uh, you know, last the last three weeks. I, I said it won't be quite that many, but be aware of that. Uh, it's just uh, amazing to me the, the amount of pressure on them. And anyway, let's move on. Uh, I, I mentioned Blue Water a while ago. I got an email from Terry at Blue Water, and I'd mentioned one of our viewers, uh, Nat Harris, got him a new boat. Anytime you get a new boat, Blue Water has this deal, and if for any kind of boat supplies, it's 10% off. 
Now that can add up really quick. If you bought a new boat and all, you know you got you to get the you know, life jackets, the anchors, the paddles, and all kind of stuff. Now it comes with a fire extinguisher, but you might want a little stronger fire extinguisher, and different things like that, and, and just all kind of little gadgets that you want to add to it. That's just one of the fun things of getting a boat, adding stuff to it. But anyway, at Blue Water, You'll go down there now. What they need, they, they can't. Um, they don't want a phone. They don't want a phone receipt. What they want is your hard, hard copy of your receipt because uh, they have to make a copy and all themselves. So, go down there, show them the receipt of your boat, and then you go to the whole boating. They got a back corner in the back right-hand corner as you go into Blue Water. They got all kind of boating accessories, and you get 10% off of that, and that can add up. You can. You can easily, easily spend five hundred thousand dollars on boating accessories. Okay, so be aware of that. Also, who knew that we had a free fishing day this past weekend? <laughs> Did y'all know that? I, I apologize for not letting y'all know, but I flat out didn't know. I didn't get any communication from FWC to to let y'all know that. I actually, I got to think about. It. I went looking. I went looking on their website, and that, that's a that's just a bear. You you just can't figure out anything on that website. And I, I can't find anything about it, but supposedly there's seven or eight free fishing days uh, of the FWC free, I'm gonna say free, you know, license free fishing days. So if you uh, know where to find that, let me know. I will share it with the rest of y'all. But I didn't know, uh, I was just a real poor job of communication on their behalf. And, and I wish we would have had uh, more, more better information from them on, on something like that. I know most of y'all have your license and all, but if you have a cousin coming down from Alabama, that wants to go fishing, what a great opportunity to take them out there on a the pier or, or surf fishing. And, and I've gotten some reports. Uh, tomorrow I'm gonna talk about a little bit about surf fishing. It's, it's sort of late summer surf fishing is sort of slow, but then it really starts kicking off now. This water temperature goes down just a little bit and we're about to get to that point. So make sure you start getting your surf fishing stuff ready. And we'll talk about it a lot of it tomorrow. It's one of my favorite outdoor things to do is just go out surf fishing. But now we could not have done it this past, this past weekend. We couldn't have done it in the, uh, at the Cape because uh, you couldn't find a spot. Y'all, uh, we gotta wrap it up. Y'all have a great day today. Do something good for your fellow man. Enjoy the great outdoors and God bless. Thanks for watching America's only daily outdoor TV show, Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester, featuring hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.